Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Blue Abroad YouTube channel with another episode of The Rest. I'm your co-host, Aris Limitakos, and once again, every week, Nathan, you're joining me once again, mate. How are you? I'm, I'm good, you know, another week of football down, one week closer to finals. How about yourself? Yeah, good. I mean, one week closer to finals as Carlton supporters, we, despite our loss on the weekend, we might be actually seeing some September football in a very long time. Now, there's a lot to get through, some breaking news slash news that we all, we all thought was happening, which we'll touch on from the top. And we got some news about, or not news, but we got some talking points about some big Victorian clubs, which we'll touch on as well. But I think the news that broke today or was released today is the AFL have made some well overdue amendments to the high tackle rule. Um, just before we, we dissect the the changes the changes themselves, what were your do you, do you agree with the amendments they're making or do you think this has just been an overreaction? What were your thoughts about it? Oh, look, I, I agree. I mean, but it's easy for the AFL to implement this type of these type of things, but it's they're not the ones adjudicating the games. The umpires are and I feel like we'll be sitting here next week saying, okay, they didn't follow anything that was put out. This is the same thing again and again. But I, I do think it's going to actually affect this upcoming week of football. I reckon it might be a very tough one, tough week to watch. Just your own team or as a neutral, I just think there's going to be a lot of calls that are really just undecided and making it up on the go. Yeah, yeah, I think like this. There's always a, there's always a rule in focus every week. It seems, and I feel like this week will be this rule will be very heavily looked at, and like every decision will be under the microscope. But I think if the umpires, well, the onus is now on the umpires. If they can do their job, which we all hope, like AFL standard umpires should be able to do their job, we should have little issue from with this rule going forward. Now, let's bring up the rule changes and thank you. So this was, this graphic was stated out by Jasper from the inner sanctum. Now this kind of breaks it down. So front on contact, which is now head down over the ball, trying to gain possession will be a free kick for high tackle ducking and driving your head into the player or driving your head into the player or ducking will now be holding the ball unless successfully disposed if the ball, unless the ball is successfully disposed of, and shrugging, which is the Jack Ginevan slash Joel Selwood slash Luke Shuey special, um, will now be play on. And same with dropping your knees, which has also been made or been put into the spotlight by Ginevan and Shuey and Selwood and even now and Zach Fisher um, last week. So, yeah, those are the rules. Do you agree with most of them? These? Do you agree with the now? With do you agree with the new interpretations of them? Oh, I do. I, I like what we're seeing here. Uh, but this is sort of, it's what I just said. I, I just think it's going to be over-officiated to the sense where like nothing will be called in a way. And I feel like that's the problem with these type of players who do the illegal sort of plays, I guess you could say. It just, it makes everyone equal in a sense. And they think, oh, okay, they must be doing it for this reason. They must be doing it for that reason. You know, I, I like I said, I love what's being put out. What you know, what they've amended, but I just, I just think it's going to make it really tough to be consistent for an umpire, at least. Yeah, I mean that's that's the worry. Um, however, with all this saying, I do think the AFL, AFL, how do show because I flagged a couple of weeks back that the shrugging and the dropping of the knees should be now considered prior opportunity and should be play on unless you like obviously dispose of it or if you just throw it. So I'm not saying that they watch the show, but I'm not saying that they don't either. But um, uh, yeah, I I kind of, I mean, it, it, it's, the onus is back onto the umpires, right? Because I think we are all, I think, well, from what I've seen, the footy media is pretty content with these new interpretations in terms of them on paper. Um, and I perhaps tweeted quite hyperbolically about saying this could fix football, but I, I feel, I feel like this these new interpretations could clear up a lot of grey area. Should the umpires be consistent in their interpretations of what is a duck, what is a shrug, what is a dropping of the knees? Now, we all know the game moves fast. We all know the players move in 
split second motions that can easily trick an umpire into thinking they did something they didn't do or vice versa. Now, I mean, fingers crossed the umpire just can, we can all just forget this, even hold this whole year to date and this whole dramatization about the ducking, shrugging rule. And hopefully the umpires can just get it sorted quickly because we don't want this issue going to finals. Well, it will be. So get used to it. This okay. will be an issue. And look, I think I said this in a cut like way earlier on in these episodes. And I said like this league and most people couldn't even tell you what constitutes a mark. That's, yeah. that's the level we're at. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's just hard to put up with. Yeah. I mean, I don't want it to be. Like I just want to speak about how good X player is or how good X team is. But, like, I feel like I, – I wonder. I feel like we can make predictions. What rounds? So, like, next week, what umpiring decision or what what interpretation are we going to speak about? And then we can just keep doing this for every single week. I feel like it could be could be interesting to see. If we could have a wild guess, let's play a quick game. Question without notice. Wild guess. What? Yeah, what interpretation or what rule will we be talking about this time next week? I'm not saying we will, but if we were to talk about a rule that was wrongly interpreted or wrongly um, called by umpires on a consistent basis, what would it be? Oh, uh, for me, the trip. What the trip? Know, like, yeah, like you know, the amount of time. Not like a blatant, obvious trip. One of those where a player is taking out another by their knees, I guess, going for the ball, but it just looks all right, so they play on. It, yeah. Umpires ignore that way too often is what I've yeah. seen. Not just Carlton games, quite a few games it gets ignored. That's a guess. You know? That's a guess. I, I reckon it'll be the push in the back in a marking contest. Push in the back. Uh, that is it, I feel, yeah. I feel it's like what, what game's on Friday night, but whatever game's on Friday Richmond night. Richmond Freo. Richmond Freo. I think Josh Gibkus is going to give away seven free kicks to Matt Tabiner for pushing the back. Why not? That's probably in the realms of possibility given the yeah. umpiring it's standard this not year. Not a bad call. Not a bad yeah. call. We'll, we'll wait and see. Hopefully not because we just want to be able to speak about the footy, but who knows? Who knows? We'll have to wait and yeah. see. But let's go to the footy and let's actually speak about Richmond. It's a pretty good segue. Now, they did fall um, at the hands of North Melbourne. So, I mean, North... Congratulations, your second win of the season. But let's turn our attention to Richmond. And is this something that is this something we should start to worry about? Is this the start of a bad trend, or is this just a poor two weeks where they lost last week where they probably shouldn't have lost, and they lost this week where they probably shouldn't have lost? And this time next week, everything will be fine. This is tough. It feels like we're revisiting that whole Melbourne conversation where we thought, it does, it? you know, Melbourne derailed and. We sort of could never really tell if they, you know, were picking it back up again. And still, I'm at that point where they still haven't hit their full strength after I don't know. I think it was like you know a month and a bit ago now after when those three losses. Look, I don't Richmond. I don't think there's as much to be worried about purely because the two losses came off their own mistakes. And we look at Gold Coast, and that was just errors in the back end of the quarter. With I think it was is that um. Prestia, whoever ran into the goal and Castagna. completely Castagna. So, you know, that's an error. Kick the goal, you've won that game. And then this week, last week, it was poor kicking, you know, in front of goal, 11 22. Really would usually win you the game, even if you, yeah. you know, Funnily like enough, that, yeah. that would probably win you. And it nearly did. Um, so, yeah. I, I think it's off, you know, their own errors. But, you know, going into Fremantle, like, Probably not the time to be in a situation where you've lost two in a row. You're now equal eight, so you don't have a game ahead. Uh, yeah, look, I think they'll be okay, considering their run home is not, you know, terribly hard, not terribly challenging. Richmond always find a way. I think at least we've seen that in this, this last five years. Yeah, and I mean they they visit their their dreaded Marvel Stadium on Friday night, so another away yeah, game for Richmond. Away game, um, yeah, yeah, another away game for them. But I think I think you can look at this game in a moment, and when Jake Arts, I think it was, marks the ball, 
35 out slide angle oh. with 30 seconds to play. If he just goes back and takes the kick, I know they were kicking terribly all night, but and I know Jake Gartz isn't isn't the Tony Lockett of of kicks, right? But if he just marks that, goes back, kicks the goal, a bit of a bit of ironicness or a bit of irony, I should say, or a bit of um, theatre with obviously them losing to uh, after the side in the week before, then we might not be here speaking about it. But they do have. Another away game this week, their third away game in a row. Now, can they uh, – will Freo just be too good? I feel like the golf in quality is getting away from them because I feel like with Richmond is they've always been on their – like I feel like they've always been elite. They just have struggled to put the score on the board and struggled to win games where they should have, where they should. However, now I feel like the top of the pack is getting away from them. I feel like we there's a clear difference now with Geelong, Melbourne, Freo, even Sydney to an extent in terms of just their quality to Richmond. Is that like are we could this be an issue heading into September? Oh, it's a, it's a little bit of an issue. Uh, look, they've they're not bad in the sense that they haven't competed with any of those teams. You know, they've beaten us. They've They've nearly, they nearly knocked off Sydney over there. They're, they're competitive against anyone. And I, I do agree there's a bit of a gulf between them and the top teams. They're not – I don't think you can classify them as, you know, a top four team or top – you know, like yeah. they're not they're not in that classification anymore. In terms of going back to Freo, I don't think this game is – you can pencil it in for Fremantle at all. Oh, 100%. I don't think I don't think Freo – have been awfully convincing at Marvel and I know they beat St Kilda by 40, but we've seen what St Kilda just did and St Kilda were in that game for probably the first three quarters and Carlton beat them pretty comfortably. So I don't think Freo go to Marvel and, you know, tear the place apart. So I was, and I mean, I've done my tips. It was a tough tip. I've gone Freo over just what we've seen, but it was, 3-0 3-0 by 8 for me, I think. That's my tip. I think it will be a really, really close game. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't – I think this is going to be a thriller. And yeah. it's going to be good Friday night. Big – you'd hope a big crowd, but it is a, it is an away game for both teams. So probably three people will rock up. But hopefully the quality of football will make up for the – for the. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> hopefully the quality of football will be will be there. We, we do think it will because they're two quality sides. Now, let's go from – an underperforming Melbourne team to an overperforming, in my opinion, <laughs> Melbourne team. We're going to touch on Collingwood. Now, we could touch on Collingwood all we want, but I feel like the, the easiest way to to touch on them is they are 7-1 and one in games decided by under two kicks this year. Now, to put it into context, if, they, if, if you just halve that ratio and put it 4-4, four and four, they sit ninth on the on the ladder. I think even tenth. So it's not as if they necessarily deserve to be where they are. Would you Would you agree? No, they 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 like they are good enough where they win those tight games. In fairness to them, it will, some teams how, can't do that. Yeah, you're right. You are right. But what percentage of it? Is it maybe luck or circumstance compared oh, to skill? We don't want to because, go into that. We don't want to get into that. <laughs> well, well, it has to be asked, right? Because we, we understand, yes, yeah. Collingwood, have, Collingwood have won eight in a row. But they beat the Giants by 11 points, which, granted, they probably should have won that by a fifth more, a bit right? More, so, yeah. yeah. They beat the Suns by under a kick, in which there were three yeah. goals down halfway through the last quarter. They beat North by under a kick in which they were 30 points down at three-quarter time. And they beat Adelaide by under a kick in a game where it was four points to margin with three minutes to go and no one else kicked the goal. So, like, I understand. And, I mean, if even if we look back to their games this year, I mean, they beat us by four points and Jack Silvani's flying shot with 30 seconds to go. If that goes... Four yeah. centimeters to to the left can't probably win that game. I, I feel like you have to give them credit because they're there. 
and they've won those games and they sit fifth, one game out of the top four, or even equal fourth. I, I don't know. I can't remember. But they, they're there, right? And they've won the games. But just to put it in context, in 2017, JWS had eight games decided by under two kicks and lost one of them. And they got belted in the preliminary final. So it's not something Collingwood fans should maybe hang the hat on and say, oh, if it's close, we'll win it. No no worries. Because sometimes the games won't be close. No. We, yeah, like I don't – yeah, well, I just feel like they're good, but like it's, it's tricky. We have – you know, we we both dislike Collingwood for obvious reasons. Well, I, I think yeah. I think four and four is probably the most like realistic way to look at it because I think there are a couple games they won by under two goals that they should have won by more. So I would, you know, there's probably four genuine close wins in there. Whereas there's yeah. four that they were down by quite a lot and probably didn't deserve to win those games just based off a real a good last quarter. Yeah. And I think ninth, if we're looking at ninth, is or if they were four and four, if ninth is where they're sitting, that's, I'd probably look at it and say that's a good indication of where they're at. You know, the the thing I think of is, do I want to go into finals this high up and then get absolutely belted? Well, Not that's, that I think that, it will happen, but if it theoretically does, you know, that's the question. And I was thinking about this midweek. Would you rather finish fourth and lose two finals, or finish fifth and lose one final? Why? Well, I mean. That's Any a, finals is good for a team that's rebuilding. But would you want that rebuilding team to get knocked out straight sets? No, because we've seen what's happened to Brisbane. Yeah. I guess they don't. They don't cope well. When was it? They won in twenty twenty, but otherwise they've gone out in straight, straight sets, sets. and it hasn't helped them. They're yeah. basically repeating the same thing every year. So, yeah. Look, okay. Back to your question: one loss instead of two. What, yeah, one. Yeah, you'd rather. No yeah. It's going to be interesting to see come finals time because you'd assume, based on the ladder, they'd be very unlucky to not play at the MCG in the first round of the finals. Because yeah. Yeah. say they scrape into fourth, they're going to versus Melbourne or or Geelong more than likely, and unless they finish seventh, and Sydney finish sixth, by the looks of things, will be Carlton, Richmond. In the other, or well, the two of the remaining three bottom half spots, and th- those will, of course, be played at the MCG. So you can't really, you, I mean, you can't blame Collingwood supporters for, for reveling in it. You can't blame them for being up and about because I feel like if we were in this position, we'd be, we'd, the lid would be off to put it in, into, in a good analogy. But um, yeah, they're there for a reason. And luck doesn't always. I know people say you make your own luck, and I ag- agree to that sentiment to some extent. But also, that luck won't last forever, um, as we've seen countless times with countless teams. And it would be oh so fitting for that luck to run out in that final day in September, just like it did in 2018. Yeah, well, I'm very interested to see how their season pans out. It'll. Yeah. I, I think this. I think they'll be the talking point of the off season. No matter what happens, in a way. Yeah, I think pre- yeah, pre-season there'll be a lot of can they repeat it? Yeah, yeah, which can be a good or bad thing, but I guess that's the thing. we'll get we'll get to see we'll get to see how it pans out. I mean, we saw Essendon; they got into the eight last year and they got there, but they didn't perhaps deserve to be there based on the teams they beat in the last two months of the season. You could say the same thing could happen to Collingwood; they could suffer the same fate, or they could. Time they run perfectly, finish fourth, win the win an away qualifying final, and then win the flag. So, who who are we to know? Because any comment we make will come and bite us in the ass, regardless of the result in September. I think. But let's go. I think it's time to just move on from Collingwood, and we'll touch on like it's been a, it's a Mel- very Melbourne centric um, episode because well that's how that's how it's fallen unfortunately. But um, let's go to St Kilda now. We suffered the wrath of, of the Saints and they've done the typical thing that happens to Carlton where they verse a team who have to respond they they lose the game against a team that has to respond and that, that team 
forever just goes back to the form that they were before they versus Carlton. They fell on the weekend in quite disappointing fashion. What do you make of of their season? Um, well, I got to witness firsthand that performance. I uh, was at that game. It was the most unenergetic game I've probably seen them play in a, like equal with the Sydney game. And I sat yep. through both of those games from start to finish. Don't know why. Just did. What interested me was the aftermath, and I think we saw a bit of that today on the Saints socials with Brett Rudden talking to the group, and he was saying to them, you know, are you are you holding your teammate accountable? You know, you got to speak up along those lines. And my initial thought was, why are you just saying this now? You are eighteen yeah. rounds into the full, into the season. And even I was right behind the St. Kilda bench. Every time they came off, heads down, you know, that that sort of quick high five, sat down. No energy. I I saw Jack Steele yelling at Higgins probably midway through the second quarter, but otherwise very unenergetic. They don't seem like they're enjoying their football at all. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of such a such an underwhelming season for them considering the response we thought we'd get obviously 2020 was very was a surprise to most people but they got they got to finals they won a final and they were looking to build off a fantastic season they had a great list still have a great list still have a list that is very capable of doing good things 2021 was disappointing and then obviously this season hasn't been that great I mean, I, I think that I think they're in the right hands with Ratten. I do think he's capable of of getting something out of that list, but it is kind of like we saw at Carlton, no real plan B, in a sense. And I feel like he yeah. leans instead of going to a plan B, he leans very heavily into his plan A, which can work, and we saw it's it, we've seen it's worked before, but. What here's a question, question with our notice again. What percentage do you think it's Ratten and what percentage do you think it's the players? Because I think it's I think it's more player not driven, but the onus is on the players to get their shit together because like you said, there was just no energy. Like they just didn't look like they wanted to be there. It's it's fifty fifty because fifty percent is on the coach to give him a game plan that if it fails they should, you know, the play should be able to change it quickly. They clearly don't know how to do that. Yeah. And that, and I guess going on that plan B, you know, there is none, but I don't even feel like he's developed his plan A a lot. It feels like the same plan that was used from Carlton from 09 to 11 or 12, whatever. It feels like I'm watching the same thing. Yeah. But, you know, it is on the players. And, and if we're going back to what I said about that video, you, like, is this the first time the players are hearing this, that they need to hold each other accountable? And and inside the St. Kilda gyms, there is a sign that says team first, competitive, and something else. Taking much notice to it, I, I say. <laughs> look, are they following it? Didn't it doesn't look like, like it. it. doesn't yeah. look like it. And... Yeah, uh, the play the players look depleted. They didn't look like they sort of it. They gave me the sort of idea they knew it was over, and they just accepted it. Which sure they probably it probably is over. Looking at their run home, but why would you accept that halfway through the first quarter? Yeah, you've got three more quarters to play, yeah. and they still didn't they- change. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming you're writing them off for finals. Yeah, uh, I don't. Look, their run home is just not going to suit them. When that, yeah. I think the game that will just put a line through it 100 percent is they they go to Geelong over there in Geelong. So that could turn nasty. Yeah. Well, then their next five is West Coast. Over there, Hawthorne, Geelong, Brisbane, Sydney. So, Which is why I say because these next two will probably be wins. 
and then the Geelong game oh, yeah, be yeah. like just yeah. See you, we'll cut him off. Yeah. I mean, it'd take a miracle for them to get there, in my opinion. They are equal on points, fourteen percentage out um, of Richmond, but yeah, I just yeah, it seems. A little bit directionless at the moment in terms of game plan and what you're trying to get out of the list. I mean, we don't want to we don't want to go doomsday scenario because we don't really want to do that. But Brad Ratton, does he keep his job? Or I know we got I know we got his contract extended. Yes, yeah, he's kept his but, job. Do, do, oh. Oh, I mean, if they just paid him out or just was like, get out, we'll keep we'll keep you on the on the books, but just don't stop coaching us. I mean, they can't backtrack now, surely. Surely they've done it and he's got it, right? That's the thing. I, I don't think there's any way to go back now. Uh, it, it's it's a very tough scenario and I think a lot of St Kilda fans are not happy with it. Yeah. I think you give him till the end of next year. But I guess a whole year is a lot of time because you can be 0 and 10 at the middle of next year and you don't want him there anymore. So, yeah. He's, you know what, at least he's proven he's capable of getting this side to finals. It was they haven't really changed up their lineup heaps since twenty twenty. So yeah. that team, like you said, is capable of doing good things. They just haven't done it really. Yeah, and they're gonna. And I, I think I, I said this um, to my uncle, who's a St Kilda supporter, and I was looking at the ladder from last year. They're they're on the same points as last year with five games to go. So they'll probably get two or three more wins, they'll have a better record yet not make finals. Yeah. yeah. So they're actually improving. Yeah. Yet it just looks worse because of, you know, context and everything. Yeah. It's the the one step forward from 2020 and the 56 steps back they took last year. I feel like if, if this season happened last year, they make finals. I feel like it would... If they had this, if they had, well, yeah, well, because they're 40, I think, oh, well, I'm assuming they'll get two or three more wins. This They've got nine wins at the moment. And 11 got it, got you in last year. And I think the next two are wins for them. It would get him into finals. Point. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they're, not they're, still not, they're still not out of it. Like, no, they're still, well, I, mean, I mean, they could finish the round in the eight. That's the thing. Freo, Freo beat Richmond and Melbourne beat the Dogs and they Which get over West Coast. Likely scenarios. They could finish around in the eight. And yet there's this, it's quite, it's really bizarre. It's almost, it's, I mean, dare I say it, it's almost Carlton-esque. There's this doomsday <laughs> scenario despite them actually being in an okay position. Yeah. It, it, do you think it comes from the fact that even if they make finals, they won't do anything in them? You know, they'll just be feeling the numbers. Yeah, they don't I, feel I, like they're worthy of being there. Whereas someone like a Richmond yes. feel like they're worthy to be there, they don't feel that. No, they don't. There's no way their fans would feel worthy being there. And they would have to play a Carlton, Collingwood, or Sydney. Yeah, you'd think. Or not heaven, beating. Heaven, heaven forbid a Brisbane or Fremantle over there. That's the thing. I think it would be yeah. worse for them. I think it would. And a bit disastrous, like Essendon last year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, heaven forbid they lose on Sunday, Sunday twilight. That won't end. That big show end. next week if that happens. Big show next week if that big happens. Big show next week. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's let's leave it till next week. Should that happen, and we're probably going to be sitting here this time next week, having had this conversation with the St Kilda somehow being in the eight, and yeah. considering. The I mean, people were speaking about them for top four, po or pre buy or like during the buy. They've come out after that and have been shocking, and yet they're still with in the hunt with for finals. And with how competitive this season is, in my in my opinion, you can categorize the eight into just two sections: top four and bottom four. There's no fifth, sixth, like third, top two. I feel like yeah. it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, you get a home or away final, but every team is really really similar. And finals time, anything can happen. So, despite the doomsday, doomsday like atmosphere, it's not all that bad at the moment. But let's 
go to a team that we thought was all that bad and have somehow turned it around a little bit, and that's the Bombers. You, Nathan, the man above you, Sam Draper, kicked. Firstly, before we start, Sam Draper's goal. Is that goal of the year or has that just been so overhyped just because he's 200 centimetres? Oh, look, I reckon it will be up there for goal of the year because blokes that are 200 centimetres don't do that very often. Yeah, uh, if, it was, if it was a midfielder, it would you'd just sort of move on. Oh, yeah, if it was a midfielder, it would win goal of the year. Yeah, Patrick Cook should would, do that. He did used to do that, Brisbane. But, um, <sighs> what a game. But, um, no, yeah, it will be up there. It'll definitely be up there. Yeah, it was a good goal. And, and I feel like Drape, is, he's the perfect man to do it with the hair and the, the eccentric celebration. Yeah. But we're not, let's not speak about him. Let's speak about his club. Now, they were in the doldrums with the Norths and the West, West Coasts of the competition, yet they've won three in a row two, against two sides in the top eight. Yes, two sides in the top eight and then one side battling for the top eight. I know your opinions on on this. I, I think you don't really rate them, do you? No, because we've seen what good teams do to them and I look at the teams they've played. Well, firstly, I'll say it's winning's good. It builds the confidence and I do think they are improving, but I just don't think these wins are like enough to say, wow, this team is can contend next year. They're they're on already. It was just a poor first half. They beat a Sydney team who we have who has proven they struggle against bottom teams and they seem to never actually beat the teams they should. A Brisbane team who was playing without half a team because of COVID. And Gold Coast who have yet again proven they do not travel well at all and do not scrape, do not get away wins. So Good wins nonetheless, but I just in, look at the you know bigger picture. You could say that yeah. about a lot of teams' wins, but I just think I want to see them beat a genuine team who is like good, like doing really well. Sydney was a good win. Yeah. Don't get me wrong; that was probably a win you can say well done. But I want to see it again. If they're serious, they'll do it again. They've done it three weeks in a row. I mean, it is. I've done it three weeks in a row. It is impressive. Okay. You're still not convinced, but... I'm not convinced. Not convinced. Let me see more. They, they, there's five games left in the year. They've got how many wins? You know what? If they're serious, wins. they beat Collingwood this week. This is yes. a game you need to win. Yes. If you're serious. Yes. I agree. That's a yes. I agree. And it would be very... It would, I mean, it would it'd be typical 2022 for Essendon to beat Collingwood. Just shake things up even more. But um, if they win the next five, 11 wins, could scrape in. Could scrape in. <laughs> North <laughs> North have to beat a Freo Brisbane, but it will work, you know. If Essendon make finals, we'll stop. I, I, I'll delete. No, I won't say that. I won't, I won't make any promises, just in case. We'll, we'll leave that there. Um, let's, let's go. Now, let's actually move to an interstate team. I know they've got Melbourne roots, but let's just do that. The Swans, we touched on them briefly um, when we just spoke about us and them, but they beat Freo. I feel like that, despite yeah. their, despite how good they are, that did shock a few people considering where, the location and the form of the two teams heading in. So this raises the question, who, and I mean, you, you came up with this question, so I feel like maybe you should introduce this one. No, well, I mean, the I think this game firstly was went under the radar. I've not heard people speak about it apart from when they just briefly bring up Sydney. But the question is, realistically, who was the most dangerous team in the top eight? So on any given day, who is going to go and do their job no matter where it is, when it is? Because there's a few talking points and there's teams who give hints that they can do it, some more than others, and that's why I brought this question up. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's the old any time, any place mantra. I feel like I mean, if we take the top eight as it stands and work bottom to top, I feel like Richmond Richmond um, probably can't really play anywhere other than the G. Um, yeah. And then us, I mean, Carlton have had a great record at Marvel, but you, we won't play at Marvel in the finals, so that can't really be taken into account. 
we have had a underwhelming away record in terms of traveling. I think we've won two out of four Not games yet. interstate. Yeah, it's been poor. Yeah. I think we're we we've halved our interstate games. The Pies have shown that they can beat the Suns over there, which is a pretty good win. We just talked about the circumstances of that, but they got the four points. Um they beat Freya over there and I know there was extenuating circumstances with the conditions, but once again it's at any time, any place, any weather, any circumstance, you get the job done. I can't quite remember any other times I played in the state, but they have they seem to have a decent record there. And then you have who's sitting in fifth? Oh, Sydney. Well, they're sitting in sixth. Sydney, um, yeah, they proved they can. I think beating Freya out there kind of is the hardest test at this season anyway. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm looking back at their games. They, they're they an odd team. And it goes back to they, they seem to like struggle against some teams they shouldn't. I guess traveling, I'm looking, they've... You know, they went to Tasmania and beat Hawthorne. We go back early. They lost to the Dogs in Melbourne. They lost to the Blues in Melbourne. They beat the Ds at the MCG. Uh, they lost to Port in Adelaide, which is a game you'd think they no, probably, probably would win. Yeah. And they lost to the Bombers at the G. So it, they're, they're a really interesting side to talk about because I would not want to play them in finals just purely because... They do travel. They can really turn it on when they want to, but similarly, yeah. they 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 can't. They just turn off it sometimes as well. Yeah, well, I mean, as a Carlton supporter, well, let's just assume the top eight stays in terms of the top four and the bottom four stay, just with shuffled positions, because I feel like that's probably the most likely at this stage. Who, would you rather versus Sydney over there, or Richmond or Collingwood at the J? Uh well, it's a tough one for travel purposes. Yeah, yeah. Sydney, Sydney over, Sydney over there for a good good day out. But um, yeah, well, as a fan, well, if you want your team to win, mate, come on. <laughs> but look, no, I, I would rather play. I would, I would, I'd rather play a big team. I just think you, if there's no better way to prepare yourself or put yourself yeah. in that situation than doing that. And I think Sydney. I don't. I think anyone who travels to Sydney. I said this earlier on. Not I, the only team who's beaten them over there is the Suns. No one goes over to Sydney and beats them. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just too tough. Yeah, especially in finals, like that team. I know they 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 made played finals last year, but then like they played finals last year and they didn't. They haven't played finals a lot in terms of that group, right? Yeah. But it's Sydney, like they just have that culture, right? Like even, even I feel like even Carlton, we haven't played finals in a long time, but yeah. you just, I mean, fingers crossed, you just feel that we have that gravitas, big club history, MCG, big crowds in home and away seasons that we get the job done, like in those high pressure games. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see. And then if you move to the top four, I think Brisbane probably can't play anywhere other than, other than the Gabba. Yeah, especially at the MCG, Freo. I mean, have they played the MCG this year, Fremantle? They beat Melbourne there, but see, I think that's their only trip this year. They haven't played Richmond, I mean, Essendon, Carlton, Hawthorne. So no, yeah, it's yeah. their only. That's their only one. And they they tick the highest box in terms of travelling to Melbourne. Um, maybe yeah. except Richmond or Collingwood, give or take. But and then the Cats. Well, I mean. Who knows what's going they, on with the cats? Well, Geelong... They're a bit like Richmond. They they have they have every single game away unless it's where they want to play. Yeah. Geelong in finals, I, I don't know. We saw them two years in a row, lost to Port in... Yeah. I think it was the exact same game, like qualifying. Qualifying, yeah. Um, even we go back a couple of years, you know, 20, 2019... Uh, I mean, I say away game against Richmond. It's an away. It's an away game in a sense, but they they fell flat there. Twenty eighteen, uh, it's blanked out of my mind. Twenty eighteen, they lost to. Um, no, they didn't make finals in twenty eighteen. I don't think. No, did it wait? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Oh no, no, they 
No, 2018, they actually they 2017 was Luke. No, 2017. Are we talking finals? Because 2017 was Luke Shuey after the siren. Yeah, but I think 2018, they played Collingwood in a qualifying. That was West Coast. And they played, was it? Yeah. It was it was Richmond, oh. West Coast, Collingwood, oh, yeah, Hawthorne, was. Oh. Melbourne, JWS, Sydney, Geelong, I think. I think that was a little. Anyways, let's, let's just keep, let's keep moving. Yeah. Let's keep the shadow. But, but Geelong are an interesting one. I think. They struggle, but I'm actually going to throw out a very controversial point here. It probably contradicts what I've said before, but I think Collingwood are the team that on any given day will turn up and win. Oh, yes. Yeah, and they have proven just, it yeah, in the past. Yeah. I'm quietly absolutely shitting myself if Carton versus Collingwood in, the, in, the, in any final. Yeah. I, can, mm. I won't be able to do it. Not for the rivalry's sake, but I just know exactly what's going to happen. They're going to it's show the up. whole. It's the like, whole thing of well, look, their they, their quality hasn't proven they should like be here in a sense, not, is, not yeah. be here. And it's like, well, they. Have, I feel like if you're a Collingwood fan, you'd have nothing to play for in the finals, not in a bad way, but like a. It's, it's no right expectations, here. not expectations yeah. in a sense. If if you, I don't know, if especially if Sydney, if Sydney had to play Collingwood, that's the oh. only team I think would. They wouldn't want to play at the SCG. Yeah. Carlton, I reckon they could take, and Richmond, I reckon they could take. Yeah. Collingwood, different story. Different story, yeah. And because of the nature of it, if they scrape <clears> in <throat> and finish fourth, unless Frio finish top, it'll be at the G as well. So, yeah. It'll be, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I guess we'll have to wait and see because this could, this could be a season where we see a team finishing sixth or seventh win the grand final. Just because yeah, of how even, a, yeah. Just how even it is. Like, Two games I think from first or seventh. For, I think, especially if, if Richmond finish, if Richmond hold their eighth spot, I genuinely think eighth to top has a very, very similar chance of winning the the, final, the granny. Like, in my opinion, and I think the team no, that's that, a fair call. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, and it's going to make for good, good viewing and good discussion so i can't wait for that but let's move on let's finish with the moments or the rest of moment of the round and there was no real competition for this week oh although no, just um, that's just popped into my head special mention to michael hurley making his return to football yep. VFL. we love to say that um yeah rivalry aside all that all that stuff it's good to see a very very good player and a underrated player we would i would go as far as saying um, making his return to football after us. How long is it? A couple, is it a year and a bit, I think? Yeah, been a while. It's quite a if while. we don't remember, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, there you go. That's a good there idea. Go. So good to see him back playing. Hopefully he gets he gets a game in the in the ones this year because I feel like it'll be good to, good to see him. But um, if we're going AFL moment of the round, it is no debate. Cam Zerha, like it was – Kicked six straights, kicked five goals in the first half of five disposals. And he didn't kick one in the second until two minutes to play where he roved the, t- roved the ruck contest beautifully and, and snapped home from the pocket. Now, I didn't actually say this live because I was, I was, which I've explained to Nathan and I've explained on the fan cams, I was trying to find the park outside the MCG and I couldn't. So I was listening to it. Didn't really comprehend what had happened until the sirens sounded. But, um, yeah, it's... I mean, maybe not, maybe not typical North Melbourne, but like, if they were ever going to win a game, it's the new, it's the new coach bounce, it's that whole momentum and everything like that. So, it's good well, to I got a very a, a good um, sort of fact around this that the last time they switched, I think, went to an interim coach, which was um, not Ray Shaw. Sure, the other, yeah, it was Ray Shaw. Sure. Um, yeah. It was the same round, the same opposition at the same ground. And who won? North Melbourne. And go. I don't know for sure with crowds, but I know it was 22,000 something for that 2019 game. And it was 22,000 for last week. That, there you go. It is there you go. So, a bit crazy. A bit odd. There you go. There you go. 
They get North is. have. I feel like Richmond have bogey teams. Like I feel like they are they are they are one for a bogey team. If that makes sense, like they do like yeah. to be a little Richmond's, bit susceptible. Well, yeah, well, their history, I think, in like close games over that. I don't know. I think the last like ten or fifteen is not very good. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there you go. I was, yeah. I mean, oof. I mean, as as Carlton supporters, we love the Richmond finishing ninth meme and all that stuff. No, it's not just happen. Carlton. It's not just Carlton. Yeah, true. I feel like we revel in it more, but <laughs> considering considering what I mean, well, considering the irony of Carlton finishing ninth in twenty thirteen and and knocking Richmond yeah. out of the final, <laughs> the only team ever to lose a final to a team that didn't make the final. It's great. Despite their three flags, that's what will hold on them forever, forever. Because it won't happen (laughs) again, let's be honest. Um, Yes. You'd you'd hope not anyway. Fingers Uh, crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay. That's enough. 40, just a tick over 46 minutes. Nathan, thank you very much for joining me once again. Thank you all very much for watching. Leave your thoughts. In the comment section below, subscribe to Google Broad, like the video. Um, see you next week, same time, same place, same two co-hosts. See you guys next time. Goodbye.